Hello there, everypony! This is Mark, aka the Wolf Pony here, and... What the hell is that? INCOMING! Oh, crap! <laughs> oh, the pain. Who the hell are you? I'm... Meta-me. Meta who? Meh. Mena. Meh. Can you get me out, please? Oh yeah, right! Well, since you're here, want to review the latest episode of My Little Pony? Oh, the Breezies? Ah! <gasps> so cute! I'm gonna pretend you did not say that. Oh my, Twilly. Aw, they're so cute. Damn it, to the intro! So, where do we begin? First, let me say this. Now, Natasha has so far been the rookie writer that delivered her best, like in Pinky Apple Pie. Or in Fight to the Finish with Ed Valentine. Now we got to her second episode within the line, and I have to say it's one good episode. But of course, though, she's a rookie and very good, but every episode has its flaws. That is true, so let's go and look into this episode, shall we? Applejack, has the episode been able to present the moral? Now the moral in this one is sort of a rehash of what putting your hoof down did, but only this time it's done a whole lot better here than that. Here is that sometimes too much kindness can keep a friend from doing what he or she wants, and it's best to push them to their own, and while it is cruel, it can be a good kind of kindness. Well actually, the moral is something the show hasn't actually touched on. The fact that being blunt about what needs to be done is very important and very kind, opposed to what people want to do. Yeah, and I like how it tests the kindness that Fluttershy has with the Breezies. There is a good showing of what will happen if you let your friends take too much from you. Kinda like Rarity in Rarity Takes Manhattan. Wow, I never knew that, but however, that was more on be careful on who will take advantage of you, while here is abusing your kindness to get much with you. One thing I appreciate is that it shows that you need to be absurdive for your own good. If friends try to treat you this way, it's best to push them away and let them learn themselves. Very true. If there is ever anything that feels off is that the Breezies just want Fluttershy to take care of them and yet they didn't want to go home? I don't know why, but it just felt off for a moral like this. Yeah, it would make more sense if their home was established as not as perfect as previously thought of, but that would harm the development of the Breezies. Yeah, good point. So overall, the moral is really well shown here, with only one thing that kind of bugged me. I give the moral a 5. For the character development in this episode, I give it a 1 in my system of episode analysis. So what's next? Next is... Rarity! How pretty is the episode? Now, the animation is pretty much what you expect from an MLP episode. There really isn't much to talk other than the introduction of the Breezy's designs. So. Fucking. Cute! I know, right? Damn it! Anyway, these guys have a lot more personality and lore looking than their G3 counterparts. And they are just small ponies with wings and antennas back then. I might just draw you and me as Breezy's. Ooh, I would love that. Focus, Meta! <laughs> These guys are actually bug looking along with many insect features. The animators really put fun on how they look like. <coughs> are you gonna be like that? Sorry, I just have a fear of insects and find them very disgusting. Oh, I see. I guess you never saw that SpongeBob episode when they were taking care of Sandy's pets. Nope! Stop! Don't worry, I'm not playing that clip. Let's move on before I throw up. <coughs> Alright, let me wrap up here. So overall, I love the designs and the breezies, but other than that, it's what you expect from the MLP animators. So I give the art a 3. Hey, I didn't play that! <coughs> Sweet Celestia, I'm gonna be sick cleaning that! Pinkie Pie, how funny is the episode? 
comes to the humor of the episode, it's pretty subtle for the most part, and that is what I expect from Natasha when I saw Pinky Apple Pie, only not more active. Well, in sense of humor, the only thing I found very prominent is the beginning when they did a callback to Sonic Rainboom. Yeah, that is true. That had me laughing there, but there was also Pinkie Pie with her assertiveness here. It was not only funny, but pretty much fixed what Pinkie had done in Philly Vanilli. That reminds me, I still need to review Philly Vanilli. Yeah, me too, with two other people. But anyway, Pinkie is pretty much the gag machine here, but it's done well. Also, Spike... Spike is just... Ugh! Starting to really be a pain to watch, he constantly gets hurt for the sake of comedy and character development went out the window with power ponies. I wouldn't say that as if he's gonna be the butt of jokes again, then he is pretty much fine here. Nothing that made me angry at least. So where does the humor rank with you? Alright, humor here, I give this a 2 as pretty much there isn't much that made me chuckle a lot. Spike and Pinky are pretty much fine with me for being the jokes here. As the humor for me wasn't all that prominent, I will give it a 0 or a 0.5. What do you think? Seems about right. Okay, now on to... Rainbow Dash! How cool, action pack, and how the visual gags play in the episode! Now, it's pretty cool for a writer to be able to put the breezes in an episode and have more polished up than their G3 counterparts. Well, the designs, we can agree, are just mm, sublime, but also how they had kind of a dulled action feel when they had to use small winds to have the breezies fly. Yeah, that is true. Now, for the actions of this episode on how the plot moved forward, it's pretty well paced even with some odd actions. One thing I don't like is that the Breezies really wanted to stay with Fluttershy, but do they ever think about the others that will miss them? Didn't we cover this in the moral? Yeah, but it still kind of bugs me to be honest. Huh, ironic as they are bugs. I mean, the leader seems to be showing what I think of them. <coughs> mm. Also, leave it to Spike to cause the actions to move the plot. When he was trying to see the Breezies, I think he could have gotten a view on that spot, but it has to move somehow. He's just... Ugh. Let's keep going before my emotions trigger a magical activation of the magic quantum converter and the transwarp rift hopper. My major problem with this is that I don't think Spike should have been the cause of this. This could have easily been fixed if the ponies who pushed the breezies be at fault at this one. That would have solved a lot, actually. Oh, and let's not forget about how they solved the conflict as Twilight found a book that could transform them into breezies. Now, it's fine since she found it in the Royal Sisters Palace, but why not a levitation spell? I'm just nitpicky here, but it sure is odd. Oh yeah, the spell of Deus Ex Machina. Shit! Yeah, plus their transformation and all, but I kind of see it as a callback to bats. In both senses, they still are fucking adorable. Oh, no, no. But however, if there is one action that the character did right, it's Fluttershy. I mean, the choices she made are similar to the actions of putting your hoof down, only not so contrived and mean. It made a lot more sense, I could give you that. Fluttershy was very amazing in dealing with the bees and showing that she had learned a lot from putting your hoof down. The bees! Please, don't revive that mean. It's dead for a reason. Never? Now, when it comes to the visual gags, not much than the two or three little jokes, and to me, they are time and nice to see a callback from Sonic Rainboom. Overall, I give the entire section a four. Oh, well, that's rather generous. Fluttershy, how the emotions play in the episode. Now, when it comes to the emotions on this episode, it's pretty much tame for the most part, with some moments here and there. My emotions, however, were scattered when it came to Seabreeze. I was cheering him on, and when Flutterbee appeared, I face hoofed. Just, oh, so many feels. Now, when we first began, I was really happy when they made the Sonic Rainboom reference, only this time it was Fluttershy doing the coaching. Fluttershy, Flutter Hulk, Flutter Bat, Flutter Bee, Flutter Breezy, and now Flutter Coach. When will it end? Yeah, it made me really happy when Fluttershy is getting some of the best moments with this season. Next, we got to the Breezies, which everybody by now is going gaga for at this moment. Fluttershy has more personas in the show than any other pony. Then we got to the major conflict, which I was upset when Spike is the one to move it again. But then after that, it's mostly tamed, and I did get a funny feeling here and there seeing the Breezies needed treatment, with only one getting so worked up about it, which caught my side of interest. Spike's progressional use was a tad irritating, but as long as it was funny to somebody. Soon we get to see the leader of the Breezies and Fluttershy talking out, and this hits me here mostly because it's fixing an episode that failed at. 
Well, this seems pretty spread out in terms of feels. We see this build on putting your hoof down, but however, it was shed in a good light, and it doesn't make Fluttershy look like an asshole! Well, that's true enough. Once we see that Twilight has a spell and turn themselves into Breezies, I was confused and sorta of happy at the same time. Yeah, it is odd, but however, it does have a good looking main 6 Breezy designs. Then we are off to the final part of the episode, and I have to say I was very happy with the results here, and it is nice to see Sea Breeze to meet up with his family. So overall, I give the emotions a 4. Twilight, how the story is well told. Now on to the story. So Mena, as the story as a whole, what do you think of it? Oh, now this story was fantastic in terms of world building and introducing a new species to Equestria. The exposition was a tad too long for my taste, but that's nitpicking. The build up to the climax of Seabreeze and Fluttershy conversing was amazing. The resolution was just mm, so touching and beautiful. He has a kid! He was like a breezy version of Odysseus! Oh yes, the world building aspect I can appreciate here mostly because it adds more lore to this place. One thing I like in this story is how Fluttershy is in this episode. She shows her learning and putting your hoof down, but knows how to balance the two without going overboard. The story was lacking a tad in explaining the length of time the Breezies were there after all. Fluttershy said it would be two days until the portal closed. Oh yes, there are a ton of things that could have used a bit more dialogue here. One thing I wish is that they would go a little in depth of what the creatures are. I'm not the one who asked for more, but one could have asked just one line to explain it all. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't get more exposition in terms of the breezies and how they work. It's just disappointing. One thing I do have to complain here is that the middle act might be boring for some. I mean, it didn't happen with me, but I can see why some find it dull. Yes, and with all these points, I would give the story a 1. For me, the story is pretty good with a dull middle at times, and with only use of contrived with Spike, I have to say that the story will get a 4 for me. Dear Princess Celestia, here are both of our thoughts on this episode. Overall, this episode is pretty good. Luckily, it managed to have some good care and thought and it pretty much is needed when you have a key episode. I like the introductions of the Breezies and I love how Fluttershy is in this episode. Sure, there are a few things here like the lack of explanations that, that the Breezies have and the certain contrived with Spike, but overall, this episode is pretty good within my good graces and top tier. Well, this episode ranks kind of low for me in sense of systematic reasoning, but I still enjoyed it. Some of the best entertainment can come from the simplest or otherwise irritating episodes. So as a disclaimer on my score, I must say that music is near to non-existent here, so I awarded it a zero. Well, Meta, it's nice having you here. It was nice being here. I just want to know how I got so lost in the rift. I bet I can find my way back. Tu gratios meos amigos nois. Et voila. Wait, you forgot to close the hole! Damn it! Oh well, I mean, it's not gonna be a problem. Well, this is Mark, aka the Wolf Pony here, and I hope the next day will be even better.